Demand for crypto collectibles and crypto art, it's on the rise, and consumers are rushing to the nifty gateway platform to place their bids for unique, one-of-a-kind cryptographic tokens. After being acquired by Gemini, the crypto exchange founded by the Winklevoss twins, the platform has now become a hub for some of the hottest digital art out there. With me now is Duncan Cock Foster. He's one of the co-founders of Nifty Gateway. Good to see you. Hey, Hope. Thanks for having me on. Happy holidays. I mean, I mean, you've got a really tremendous uh, December, a, a year as well, a record year. But let's start with just giving us some more of this background on how Nifty as the idea and has the platforms grown, what really compelled you to begin? Well, uh, you know, in, in 2017 or 2018, I just got kind of enmeshed in the, the crypto and, and uh, blockchain world. I was never really into, the, into finance or the world of money. So I was kind of naturally drawn to NFTs, which are a use case of a blockchain that doesn't involve money. You know, it's all about art. Um, and so that, I found that just much more interesting and I kind of became obsessed with the, the concept. You know, I, I tried to work for another NFT company at the time, but there weren't really that many. So really my only choice was to start my own. And this was back in 2018. NFTs were a pretty small niche world then. They're still pretty small and niche now, but they were even, even smaller back then. And uh, really the issue we were looking to solve is just how inaccessible NFT technology was to most people. Um, you know, back then, in order to buy an NFT to collect crypto art, you had to get cryptocurrency, sign up for a wallet. It could take weeks and it's extremely confusing. We said, OK, what if we can build a platform where all you have to do to collect a piece of art is sign up and enter your credit card information? And that's exactly what Nifty Gateway is today. And I think that's a big reason why Nifty Gateway, you know, has had the year it's had just because it's so easy to use and accessible for regular people. Well, let's break it apart. NFT crypto art, what are the concepts here for those who are not as familiar? Totally. Well, um, digital art is a, it's an incredible creative medium. You know, you can create things that are really, really beautiful. And there's all sorts of people who, who spend their lives creating beautiful digital art, but they've never had a way to sell it before. You know, a work of digital art is just an image file, which means you can copy it infinite times. So you, if you're a digital artist, you can't sell your artwork the same way that an artist can sell a print or an artist can sell a painting. NFT and blockchain technology are a solution to that problem. You know, an, what an artist will do is they'll create a, a blockchain token called an NFT, non-fungible token. And then they'll basically say like, this token designates ownership over a specific piece of art. And I'm only gonna make one of them. So this, this artwork is a one of a kind artwork. Um, then people will go out and collect the token, you know, show off the piece of artwork Essentially, the token is just sort of a digital certificate of authenticity for the digital artwork. Um, and the solution is, you know, getting incredible adoption because people have never had a way to collect digital art before. And that's that's really all it is. I think people tend to overcomplicate it, but it's, it's really simple at, at its core. You know, we've never been able to collect digital art the same way we can collect paintings and sculptures. And, and now we can. And digital art is a concept of course that's that's sort of been around but i mean at its heart at its core what is it is it is it just paintings i mean is there interactivity uh for people who have you know never even seen a piece of digital art i mean they might think of just a, a social media post yeah yeah well i guess i mean i'm i certainly won't give a definition of what is and isn't art maybe a social media post is art uh, but digital art usually just refers to art made on a computer with software um and yeah, a, a lot of the most popular artworks on our platform are animated, are short videos. It, it's really kind of quite an incredible creative medium. I mean, you can't really animate a painting, you can't animate a print. So it allows for you know methods of expression that physical mediums don't allow for, which I think is a, a big driving force behind you know our platform, the whole NFT ecosystem, and all the digital artists who are creating. So the company, you started at the company with your twin brother, Griffin, and then it was acquired by another set of twins, a very famous set of twins, Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss. I mean, I don't know if that ever comes across at all in your in your mind when you think about it. I mean, the, the rare nature of that happening. I mean, the twin stuff aside, how did the deal come about? Yeah, well, that's definitely the thing that everyone seems to, to talk about when they talk about the acquisition, a pair of twins acquiring a, a company owned by another set of twins. It is a pretty funny coincidence. Um, 
the the acquisition came out came about mostly because the Winklevoss twins were interested in the NFT space. Uh, you know, they're they're prescient, they're very visionary. Often they they, they have a reputation for for like seeing trends before other people do, which personally I think is well deserved. So it was 2019 and they they were getting into NFTs and they saw Nifty Gateway and they basically said like, okay, we think this NFT trend is going to be a, a great use case for blockchain technology and uh, we want to have some exposure to it. So why don't we just buy Nifty Gateway? Um, and that, that's basically why it happened. It sounds like a pretty straightforward argument on on their end. I, I mentioned earlier that you've had quite a blockbuster year. I mean, launching in March, you had just mm -hmm. about 30,000 in, in sales and volume. And then in December alone, I think it was about six and a half million of your yeah. total volume uh, of the whole, you know, 10 million that, that this year has has seen for you guys. So what's been feeling the demand most notably in the later part of the year? Honestly, uh, I think the the demand and the growth has surprised us more than anyone else. And if you asked me, if you told me that we would be doing $6.5 million of volume in December uh, at the beginning of the year, I definitely would not have believed you. I honestly think that the demand is mostly driven by the fact that people really have never been able to collect digital art before. And digital art is a very, very cool medium. People love to collect and now they, they can collect digital art for the first time. And now that people are seeing that, that in play there, uh, you know, it's really spreading like wildfire. It's, it's basically just an idea whose time has come in my mm. opinion. And we, we were lucky to be in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, I think a lot of the work we did to make the experience simple and easy to use, uh, you know, as I mentioned, to use Nifty Gateway, you just have to have a credit card and sign up for an account. And then you can, you know, go shopping and buy digital art. You never have to get cryptocurrency. I think that contributes a lot too, but mostly, yeah, I just think collecting digital art is an idea whose time has come. And uh, that's only going to be more and more obvious in the next few years. I think it's pretty key, right? The fact that the average person who might not be as familiar with cryptocurrency can do this without having to go through a different app to acquire it, have a different account set up, transact. I mean, that's typically in the past couple of years, the way that you do acquire things um, in, in, this, in this realm. Mm -hmm. what, what were you able to do on the back end to enable this to be easier on the front end, because that has been one of the bigger issues of wider adoption of any type of crypto currency of these assets. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, this is really what the, what being owned by Gemini allows us to do. Although niftygateway.com is its own website and its own product. The whole thing is built on top of Gemini infrastructure and it's run off like, you know, run off and by Gemini, the, the organization. So Gemini is an, you know, an expert in custody and crypto assets. The art pieces we sell are crypto assets. You know, part of the reason that it's so you can just sign up and use is because we, we custody the NFTs on behalf of our users. We wouldn't be able to do that if we weren't owned by Gemini. So this is really the, the key place where Gemini's technology enabled us to build a platform that we would not have been able to build otherwise. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's another, it was a major driving force behind the acquisition. And I think that, you know, a, a year later, a year, a year out from the acquisition, we're seeing that that integration really work well. And I think definitely faster than than anyone expected. So that's really exciting. Let's talk about the art and the users and the customers a little bit more. You know, when you think about traditional art, you've got the Louvre, you've got the Mona Lisa, you know, you have these tangible assets, given that this is all digital and with the ability to screenshot or, you know, share just a, a link. I mean, the idea of having nothing tangible really in your hands that you can hold, and it's just, you know, not only just out there, but anybody can, can see a, a semblance of it in any format. Does that not then make it more difficult or, or make the valuation of, of these pieces uh, more difficult to assess, but also degrade the value at all? Yeah, well, what we like to say is, you know, you can screenshot the Mona Lisa as well. You go to the Louvre, there's thousands of people taking photos of it every day. That doesn't decrease the value of the original Mona Lisa. It actually increases the value of the original Mona Lisa. And we find the same thing as well. Yeah, you don't have to own the NFT in order to be able to view a, a work of digital art or download that that digital art image file. But that you know, the fact that people are downloading them, sharing them across social media, that actually makes the NFT more valuable. The same way that all the pictures of the the Mona Lisa 
you know, make the original Mona Lisa more valuable. The NFT is just, it's basically just like a digital ownership, a digital certificate of ownership or, or authenticity. Um, and so without the NFT, you know, you don't really have anything valuable. Even if you screenshot a, an NFT on our platform, you're not going to be able to sell that screenshot to anyone. So this, the screenshot doesn't really have any value. Um, the NFT is the only thing that has value. And, and th that was really the key, the key piece that makes this whole thing work. That was the key piece that's missing um, in the digital art world. And, and now that we have this technology, you know, digital art collecting is catching on. Who are some of the customers of these pieces of art? Is it the average consumer? Is it, you know, a consumer base that's more tech savvy? Who are they right now? It does tend to be more tech savvy people and sort of future looking people. I think we're just leaving the early adopter phase of NFTs and uh, we're starting to see this become a more mainstream behavior. But actually a lot of my friends from college, you know, even, they were skeptical of the website at first. They said, you know, I can just download the image file. Why would I buy the NFT? A lot of them are now addicted to collecting on, on niftygateway.com. Um, so I do think more and more average people are getting into our site and to, into the whole NFT world every day. It's also a lot of people, you know, from the crypto world and with, you know, people who own Bitcoin and have a, a background in crypto technology. I think if you own Bitcoin, excuse me, if you own Bitcoin, if you understand blockchain technology, you're much more, you're able to understand the, the value prop of NFTs quickly. Right. I mean, if you, again, look at the numbers, six and a half million in, in just one month alone in December, and we're not quite through the year yet, the month yet. I mean, where is that demand coming from? What, what's the underlying feeling that's driving that demand? Is it because people are still at home and they're not able to shop or they don't want to go out because of the pandemic and this is a, a gifting mechanism? Is it looked at as an alternative investment? I, you know, I think those are definitely factors that contribute, but but more so than anything else, I think it's just, you know, art, like uh, people spend, art is a $56 billion market every year. NFTs are still a small, a tiny, tiny fraction of that. What we're, we're witnessing the NFT market grow into the, the size of the regular art market because the impulses are very similar. You know, the drive to collect, the, the drive to connect with artists that you love. I really think that's the main driving force here is that people have never been able to collect the digital artists that they love before and now they can. And now that that's happening, we're just seeing this behavior spread like wildfire. What are some of the most popular pieces of art on the platform right now? Well, we this month we had a, two really large collections. Uh, one of them was by Beeple. Beeple is one of the most famous digital artists. You know, he has about 1.7 million followers on Instagram and he's well known for creating his every days. So he creates a new work of digital art every day that he posts on social media. Um, he just did his, his 2020 everyday collection and the, the collection generated over 3.5 million of, of primary market sales. And he, he had 21 of ones, each of went, each of which went for around a hundred thousand dollars each. And then the final one in the collection went for $777,000. So his collection was a huge hit. And then we also just had another big collection by Pac and Trevor Jones, who are two of the most well-known NFT artists. Their collection did about 1.35 million in primary market sales. Um, so both of them were incredibly incredible collections. I think mostly it's because these two artists, or I guess three artists, you know, they've really built up strong collector bases. They have a lot of loyal fans. They have people who love their work and really connect with what they're trying to do. So when they sell artwork, there's always high demand. Well, that is a record, right? Seven hundred and seventy-seven thousand. I mean, that's that's yeah. not your typical. What you know? What's the typical selling price for, for an item? What's your take on that? What's your cut? Um, so we usually, we sell stuff at all kinds of different price points and all different release formats. You know, you can find a lot of good stuff in the 150 to $350 range, which is much more affordable for the average person. Um, we do a lot of limited edition release formats where, you know, sometimes we'll drop 10 artworks at $350 each. We do a lot of open editions where there's a five minute period of time where you can buy an artwork, you know, at a, a, at a lower price point. But really like Nifty Gateway is, uh, it's pretty open to anyone. You know, if you're watching this, I, I encourage you to go on the website, scroll around. You'll, you'll definitely be able to find an artwork at a price point that, you know, you can connect with and you'll probably find a few artists that you fall in love with as well. 
And this is what I always tell people, you know, the key is to find artists that you love and artwork that you love. Don't buy a work of art if you don't love it. Um, because you know, your emotional connection to that, to the artists and to the, to the work that they've created, that's really the, the thing that you should be after. And that's mm -hmm. the, the best reason to collect art in my opinion. So again, the amazing year that you've had so far, 10 million kind of in sales, what's been the platform's cut of that? Well, our, our cut on the primary market um, varies. On the secondary market, we take about 5% of all secondary market transactions. And then the artist actually gets a, a cut of all secondary market transactions as well, which is uh, one thing that artists absolutely love on our platform. And one thing that we think the NFT world does better than the physical art world. You know, if you're Bas the Basquiat estate and a Basquiat sells for $50 million, you don't see a, a dime of that money, despite the fact that you contributed so much to that artwork being worth $50 million. On Nifty Gateway, if a secondary market sale occurs, then the artist gets a cut of that secondary market sale. Usually it's around 10% of the secondary market transaction, but that also varies. And sometimes it's as high as 20%. So I think that's the appeal for artists is that, you know, the argument when it comes to, let's say, books, for example, some people feel that you shouldn't buy used books because the author never ends up seeing the residuals of the book being resold over and over again. In this way, you actually have been able to capture the popularity post the primary sale. So, you know, I'm thinking again of this this amazing gross volume that you've seen from 30,000 in March to, to now you know, 10 million overall and six and a half million in, in December. Does that, does that also incorporate the secondary market sales as well? Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that yeah. does incorporate secondary market sales. And so how much of that is from secondary market versus primary market? I don't have the exact split, but it usually ends up being, I mean, for, first of all, we've only been operating since March. So, right. you know, over time, you see a lot more secondary market sales over time just like you do in the physical art world where Basquiat's works are still selling on the secondary market. Obviously there are no more primary market sales for his works. So I imagine we'll see far more secondary market sales for the collections that we've already released, but usually it's around 70, 30, 70% primary, 30% secondary. And that varies a lot from day to day, from month to month. I'm sure that for those who are looking at this as a long-term, you know, investment or or as a platform, uh, the long tail is, is really coming from the secondary as the platform matures. Now you hinted earlier about some of this, you know, limited sale uh, sales that you sometimes hold, you know, obviously Supreme has really mastered this drop culture, limited edition drop culture. How do you manage that on the platform? Well, it's, you know, doing drops and doing, yeah, like art, art drops, which are what we do is a really great way to get people excited. And you turn an art release into an event. And you get a bunch of people to show up at the website at the same time. And it's really fun. You know, art, art collecting is a social activity. Um, you know, really it's about the community around the artist and around the platform. And I think a drop is a great way to, to bring people together. It can be really challenging from an operational and, and technology perspective, especially because anytime you introduce a, a drop, there are always risks mm -hmm. and, you know, there'll, there'll be people who try and game the system. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's really contributed enormously to to the success of the platform. The, the Nifty Gateway drops how they sort of turn these art releases into events. Um, and yeah, so I think it's, it, yeah, it can be hard to manage. I mean, it presents u unique technological challenges. Uh, you know, most websites, your traffic is fairly steady, and maybe you have swings of ten to twenty percent in a given day. But for us, our traffic is low, 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 and then when the drop happens. We're at a hundred times our normal traffic. So yeah, you have to, there's a lot of things you have to do. You have to scale up your servers. You have to write special code to, to accommodate releases of those size. But I think it, it's, it's totally worth it just because of the excitement it, it creates. Well, the social aspect that you mentioned, I mean, I'm thinking about trading, you know, baseball cards, other collectibles. I mean, those are also very social activities. What is the upside of, you know, having a nifty item, digital item, you know, in that way versus when you used to trade your cards with friends? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's fascinating because NFTs are the first internet native art form. They can be sent over the internet. Um, and that, that makes them inherently a lot faster, a lot more social, like information about them can move a lot faster. I, I really think we're at the early stages of, of what the impact of that is going to be. Um, 
you know, but it is, it is pretty crazy to think about the fact that we can sell artwork. It, an artwork on our platform can be sent from one person to another instantly over the internet, you know, sending a physical artwork, you have to ship it. It's, mm. it's, it, you know, it's environmentally damaging. If you want to do an art fair, you have to ship a ton of art to one place, which can really like have a high environmental cost. Um, I, I don't really know what the, the impact is going to be, but I think it's going to be incredibly disruptive and transformative to have an internet based collectibles and art medium like we have with NFTs. I'm sure when VR gets to be a little bit easier for developers, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a wonderful, I think extension, you know, if you want to make it uh, more social and, and using that digital art in, in different forms and, and having people gather uh, virtually as well. Absolutely. Yeah. There are a number of, uh, of virtual worlds where people love to show off their NFT collections, such as crypto voxels, Somnium space, Decentraland, um, all really interesting projects. All right. So we have gone through so many great advantages of these digital pieces of art and to be on a platform like Nifty. But what are some of the criticisms that have that have come up? Well, I do think it's difficult for people to adapt to collecting something that they can't touch or that only exists digitally. I mean, it is a mindset shift. Um, and definitely we hear people say that all the time, that they miss being able to reach out and touch a, a piece of physical art. I think it's the kind of thing where people get more and more used to this over, over time. And, you know, the advantages, there, there are advantages to digital art and there are advantages to physical art. I don't think one is going to completely erase the other. You know, I think they're going to exist together side by side. How closely correlated are the assets and, and the items collectibles on Nifty to a, let's say a Bitcoin? Well, they're really, they're really not correlated at all to the, to the price of cryptocurrency. I mean, the, the number one determining factor for a work of art is the artist who created it, which is the exact same pattern that you see in the physical art world. Um, so yeah, the, you know, the pieces on our platform, they all depend way more on who the artist is, what the work looks like, how well it's received among the collectors than the price of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. You know, an effect that we do tend to see though, is that a lot of our users are investors and they have a, some of their money in cryptocurrencies. So when the price of cryptocurrency goes up, they have more disposable income. And so maybe that translates to more sales on our platform. Uh, but that's really the, you know, the extent of the correlation we see between the, the price of NFTs and the price of Bitcoin. Well, and you currently don't even accept Bitcoin either right now as, as a payment method. So what goes into a decision like this? Well, mostly implementation complexity. Um, we would love to accept Bitcoin as a payment method. And I hopefully it's something that we'll be able to do soon in the near future. But it is, uh, it's relatively complex to, to integrate. And our focus has really always been, you know, making NFTs accessible for the everyday person. I actually, I think that for us, you know, people often tend to criticize cryptocurrency as not being a good medium of exchange. For our purposes, it's actually a really fantastic way to, to send large amounts of money over the internet. You know, some of the pieces on our platform are selling for over a hundred thousand dollars. And it's really, really difficult to, to pay for that. If, if you're international, um, you know, there's really no good way wiring and it's really hard to put that charge on a credit card and the fees are in, enormous and wiring that amount of money is really, really difficult. But crypto is the ideal payment method if you're trying to spend, send large amounts of money over the internet. So one thing we talked about earlier in the week is the idea of driving more users and customers to the platform. And people who are doing this today are using traditional social media like Instagram to build that audience and then convert onto Nifty, for example. There's a trade-off, right? I mean, you you put that piece out there, and I, I mentioned this when it comes to screenshotting and just sending a link and, and just having the feeling of that artwork in your hand or in your in front of you. Um, explain how this is maybe maybe going to even evolve further. I mean, down the line. I mean, I'm thinking about this new platform, Voice, uh, which is also you know trying to pay people for the content they create, no matter if it's a piece of you know art or if it's a post. Um, what is the future of you know artists creating online and and just user generated content in general and and really being able to properly compensate the creator period? Yeah, well, I I think one thing that we love so much about the NFT industry and other platforms love as well is that artists are making significant amounts of money and they're really generating large incomes. We had an artist on our platform who who bought a house 
you know, he's done about five or six releases with us and he made enough money to buy a house. You know, he was a digital artist. He never had a way to sell his work before. Um, so the, the platform is already changing artists' lives. And I think that we're just going to see that happen more and more. Um, Which artist is this? Uh, Twisted Vacancy. Mm -hmm. He has very, very cool work. He, he's, he has a totally unique color palette that he used. And he spent, he spent years researching colors. And then he just picked a set of colors. And he said, okay, these are the only colors I'm going to use in my artwork. So his visual style is super easy. You know, you could pick, spot it a mile away. Um, and he's really popular on Nifty Gateway. But, you know, I think that this is really part of a, a larger trend of the internet helping people monetize directly by going directly to their collector base and sort of cutting out middlemen. You know, our fees are, are much lower than a gallery's would be, mostly because our costs are much lower than a gallery's are. We don't have to maintain a physical space. Um, you know, creators get a cut of the, of the trade on the secondary market. And so, you know, if you're a digital artist, NFTs are a great way for you to, to monetize and for you to like sell work to your, to your audience. Yeah. I mean, I, think, I know I'm sorry. I had, Oh no, I was finished. Yeah. I know. I, the reason why I'm really excited about, you know, platform like Nifty is because I think about the unfortunate unemployment problem that we have, which many of the jobs that have been eliminated because of the pandemic may never come back. And people are trying to find ways of, of doing other work of maybe expanding, you know, their own skill set, And, you know, by having something like this out there, they can potentially create an audience and also create and also get income that is generated no matter, you know, whose hands are, are on their pieces. Right. Exactly. And, uh, you know, the logistics of setting it up are also pretty easy compared to setting up, you know, your own physical item store. It's, it's pretty simple to sell like digital items on over the internet. You know, there's no, there's not really like setup costs. You don't have to ship them out. You don't have to deal with shipping, et cetera. So yeah, I, I'm really excited for that as well. And I really think that we're at the, the beginning of the beginning of how NFTs are going to disrupt, you know, creatives on the internet. You know, we, we, we talk to a lot of musicians. There are a few different musicians who have released content on our platform, like Justin Blau. Um, I really think we're at the early days of how musicians are going to use NFTs as well. And, you know, this technology is going to be disruptive for everyone who's a, a creator on the internet right now. And we're just, we're just witnessing the, the beginning of the beginning. Well, it's been exciting to hear it from you, who you are at the beginning of the beginning, and I'm hearing the story from the beginning as well. So hopefully in, you know, who, who knows, 120 years or, or more, somebody will look back on this and, and remember how it all started. So Duncan, thank you so, so much for spending time with us. Thanks, Hope. It was great to be here.